and so today I'm going to uh, sort of do a tag team with Nick. I won't go long. I'm going to just uh, call uh, the title uh, of our message today, Lost and Found. I want to talk a little bit about uh, evangelism. I want to talk a little bit about preaching the gospel. And you know, sometimes uh, when I read the newspapers, okay, and I have a few uh, newspaper uh, headlines that I want to show us. And sometimes while I read newspapers, okay, I read about things that happen. Uh, I am surprised and shocked at the depth of evil and sin uh, that mankind is capable of. For example, all right, uh, in these two newspaper headlines, okay, uh, uh, first, the first one is this, okay, uh, is, a, is a report on a five-year-old boy that was abused by his own parents. Can you imagine that? Five-year-old abused by his own parents. He was uh, confined in a cage. He was scalded with hot water. He was pinched with pliers. Okay? He was hit. You know, let's not go on, okay? It's just too tough, okay, sometimes, especially if you are a parent already to read such things, okay? And when I read such reports, okay, uh, I think to myself, why... Is mankind capable of such horrible stuff, all right? And the other report about, you know, a couple just abusing their helper, punching and kicking her, hitting her with various objects. So sometimes we read newspapers and we are shocked by the depth of man's evil. Or we are shocked by the generations of brokenness and dysfunction in people's families. All right, like I hear recently, I heard a few stories from different of my friends, you know, about their families' uh, issues being exposed during this circuit breaker period, okay? Maybe it's just, I don't know why, there's just something about staying together for a prolonged period, okay? That really exposed, it didn't cause the issues, it just caused the, uh, uh, the issues to be made worse, you know? Like recently, uh, a, a friend, told me, okay, his mom, you know, had, had this bad habit of just uh, keeping items at home, you know, and he didn't think it was an issue until this circuit breaker. And over two months, his house became unlivable because the mom was a hoarder. And then, uh, you know, the whole place is just filled with items, the items stacked all the way up to the ceiling, all right, and just, you know, and so I'm reminded, okay, reading this, newspapers, articles, I'm reminded hearing these stories from different people that mankind is lost without God. And sometimes, sometimes we think, okay, that how can people commit such evil sin, such terrible sin? And then I realized this, that they sin because they are sinners. Mm. Because they are sinners. The fact is they sin because that's who they are, that's their nature, they are sinners. The fundamental problem with man it is his heart. There is something in the heart of mankind that is hopelessly lost and inclined to sin and evil. We are in bondage to our sinful desires. We are in serious trouble. We are lost from God. We are lost from ourselves. We are lost from the people around us. Good becomes bad. Bad becomes good. Sin becomes attractive, evil becomes attractive, what is righteous and, and good becomes repulsive from people. I want us to turn to a verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. It says here, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, verse 4, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Everyone say blinded. Blinded. <laughs> I can't hear you. Everyone say blinded. <laughs> <laughs> he says here, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of God should shine on them. So if someone is blinded, they cannot see, right? All right, let's, let's, let's try something, all right? If I were to uh, shut off my, my camera now, you can't see me, okay? If I were to ask you, if I were to ask you, okay, what is the expression uh, that is on my face now? You won't be able to tell you. 
to tell me why because you can't you can't see because my camera is off in a way you are blinded all right and so even if all right if i were to dangle in front of you a one thousand dollar bill the fact that you are blinded you are not able to see it so sometimes you know we get upset with people when they sin and they make all kinds of wrong decisions yeah. and it's because the bible says this their minds are blinded by the enemy yeah. okay and i want us to turn to another passage of scripture uh, romans chapter 1 verse 18 it says here, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools. I love this, okay. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor uh, their bodies among themselves, to exchange the truth of God for the lie, and worship, and serve the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So we read here, okay, God gave man everything. We read in the Bible, God gave man everything in the Garden of Eden. But men decided to reject the ways of God and chose to go their own ways. So they said no to God in his face. So sin is not just an act. It's not just an action, but it is an attitude. It is a disposition of the heart. Sin is something that is in the heart, the intention. So when we exchange good for evil, darkness falls upon us and we are hopelessly lost. We can try to find our way around through technology, through science, through arts, education, maybe you know, drugs and medical advancement and so on. We hope that somewhere, somehow, sometime down the road with enough advancement and progress, we will find true peace and maybe stumble upon a paradise on earth where all our problems will be gone. But as much as all these things are good, they improve our lives, they make us sophisticated, you know, uh, they manage our lostness. Yet, if we are honest with ourselves, we are still hopelessly lost on the inside without God. With the amount of technological advancement and the wisdom of man, we have to admit we are still lost. True freedom is not the same as being independent. Right, man can be independent without God. We can be independent, but that might not be freedom. We become a slave in our quest and our search for true freedom. Now, I just want to say this, all right, because in verse 26, in the next two verses, okay, the Bible talks about homosexuality. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this in just for free, okay. You read the verses on homosexuality yourself, okay? I'm not going to go into verse 26, 27, and 28, all right? But you read it yourself. The Bible is very clear when it comes to homosexuality, all right? I just want to mention this because, you know, of uh, uh, what has been happening in, in the nation recently with Pink Dot uh, and, and all of that, okay? And some of you maybe are wondering, how do I respond in school to my friends, to my teachers? Especially now, all right, that the agenda for same-sex marriage, okay, and the redefinition of gender and sexuality and so on wants to enter our schools. Now, I want to assure you, right, that I'm aware of what is happening around the world. I remember, uh, was it in 2016? That was my first time in Africa, okay, for some reason, all right. Uh, when I was in Africa the first time, right, I had a dream. And then the following year, I go to Africa once a year. The following year, when I'm in Uganda again, I had a similar dream. Can you imagine? It's so, uh, I don't know, you call it creepy, but I know it's from the Lord, okay? I had 
two similar dreams, okay, one year apart. And uh, I don't I don't want to go into the details of this dream because uh, uh, I saw many many uh, unclean and evil things happening in this dream. Okay, when I woke up, okay, I felt this whole sense of burden and defilement and so on. But the the whole message I got from the dream is this: right, that the enemy wants to sexualize our children as young as possible. All right, the enemy wants to stir up this think okay, in our children okay before the time as young as possible and so i'm passionate about equipping uh, the younger generation to be a voice to transform culture so you know if you remember we held a forum uh, sometime was it sometime last year on uh, lgbt or you know we got a panel if you remember okay uh, a panel of speakers to come and answer questions and teach us how do we respond uh, to you know different aspects of uh, this how to reach out to our friends who struggle with same sex agenda how to be a voice against sorry not same sex agenda same sex attraction and how to be a voice against the agenda and how to love the people and how do we you know formulate a, a biblical basis for a different aspects of this all right so at least once a year okay we will teach all the young people in generations about this okay but i want to say this all right because recently a lot of people have been asking uh what is generations doing to equip uh the young people are we doing enough to equip the young people but I, so i want to say this all right that the youth ministry is not all about discipling young people and training them to be a voice in the public and political sphere or how to navigate issues like black life matter same sex marriage okay because the youth ministry is not all about that even though i'm passionate about this all right but we have young people who are struggling with everyday issues like mental health whose families are struggling with bread and butter issues all right i want to say there is a time and a season for everything Okay, we will cover this at least once a year. We will build upon what we did last year and go deeper each year and really train you guys up. All right. So if you are really facing this struggle in school, okay, you are, you know, maybe your friends are forcing you to take a stand uh, on either side, all right? I want to say this you have every right to live out your beliefs. All right. Even if I know for a period ago, all right, even if your friends, okay, are forcing you to take a stand and support Black Lives Matters, okay? I just want to say this, all right, that if you don't want to, you have every right not to. That doesn't make you a racist, okay? Because we can love and accept people who have same-sex attraction and still believe in what the Bible says about homosexuality. So if you don't want to support Pink Door and its agenda, you don't have to. Singapore is a place where we are free to practice our religion. We have every right to practice our beliefs in the Bible. So nobody has the right to force you to support something that you don't want to. All right. So if you are facing this struggle in school, I just want to say that we stand with you. You know, we pray for courage and strength, all right, to stand. All right, people force, people may force you to bow the knee. You don't have to. You can stand for what you believe in. So let's go back to Romans chapter 1 and verse 29, all right? It says here, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, and so on and so forth. Uh, verse 30, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, the undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Verse 32, who knowing the righteous judgments of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So we read in this passage in Romans chapter 1, that the problem of mankind is much deeper than just our actions. It is deep in who we are. So if you have spent some time with the broken, with the lost, with the dejected, the downtrodden, those people whose lives are broken and ravaged by addiction, you will realize that their problem is not ignorance. Ignorance is not mankind's problem. It is lostness. Having seen families torn apart by abuse or anger, the answer lies not in knowledge, 
of following rules, but in transformed hearts. And so mankind seems incapable of saving ourselves. We continue on cycles of destruction. Our hearts are broken. We break other hearts. We were abused, so we abuse others in return. Our families are broken, so we leave broken families in our wake. When loved ones are killed, we kill in revenge. This is the way of lostness and we need a radical solution to break these cycles. So I just want to tell you that mankind is hopelessly lost without God. And at this point, I want to hand the time over to Nick, who is going to share with us what we can do to help reach the lost. All right. Thanks, Pastor. I'm going to share about being found, okay? Let's go to the next slide, okay? Okay, what's the solution for the lost uh, to be found? Okay, I'm sure if I ask every single one of you guys, you will definitely know what's the answer, and the answer is Jesus, okay? Why is the answer Jesus? It's because God is the author. He's the creator, okay? He's the beginning and the end. He's the one that gives us peace, joy, Whatever that we need, even in our life, even the loss, um, the answer is Jesus. Jesus is the one that gives us hope, gives us love, wh- whatever that we need. Okay? And, um, but the next question I'm going to ask you today is, what are you doing with the solution that you have? You know, are, you, are we providing Jesus as a solution to the loss? You know, what are we doing with this solution? You know, we know that, that, that Jesus has indeed given us eternal life. At the end of the day, we know that we will be in heaven with God. We know that, that you know, when we are hopeless, you know, we, we, we have a hope um, in, in God. You know, if we need um, a life, <laughs> we need life, you know, we go to Him. You know, we have the solution, but what are we exactly doing with this solution? You know, are we keeping it inside our life only? Are we walking around with solution even when the, the, the person in, in your class next door, you know, is struggling with depression. Are you, are, are we, you know, just staying silent and not showing them and giving them what the solution is? God can break, break depression over their life. Are we providing solution to the people around us or not? For example, okay, if this, you know, we are all in COVID-19 phase, what if you have the cure to COVID-19? What will you do today? Right? You will provide this cure to every single one of the people in, in, in the world who, who is um, having this COVID-19. But can I say that all of us have a much better cure, which is the gospel. The gospel is the cure to someone's eternal life. The cure to COVID-19 is just temporary, our temporal life. But how about the gospel? The gospel is a cure that, that, that would change someone's eternal life, could change someone's eternal life from hell to live a life in heaven, you know. And are we, are we Christians that is selfish, that keeps Jesus in our life by ourselves? Or are we going around sharing the gospel to people who need the gospel? You know, um, just the other day, um, I, I was eating mukata like what two days ago, three days ago. I was with um Josiah and, <clears throat> and some of my friends. Okay, and just next to us was this um 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 uni students, two of them. Okay, and then they were just um they were just there. Okay, and then they they gave us um their meat leftover because they can't eat finish. So I said, and then we pre- uh, began to make friends and all. And I said, hey, do you know Jesus and stuff? And I began to share the gospel with them and all. And then the girl began to share herself. Say that, you know, I've been struggling depression. I've been going to, um, 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 the, um, to seek help from people and stuff like that. You know? And then I told her, right, I just told her straight, say, hey, you know, um, depression is not just mental, but it's spiritual. And I know that Jesus can set you free. And I prayed over her and, I, and, and she was just so impacted. You know, you could tell by her face. We have to share the solution. We have to share what, what, what Jesus has paid, on a, on a, uh, paid the price on the cross. We can't, we, can't, we can't just, can you imagine, okay, like um, Jesus paid a huge price, a mansion for all of us, but we do not give out this key to the mansion to people. How are they supposed to live a life in, in the mansion? 
So let's all share, okay? We are, we are all called to be a light in this world, okay? Let us not live under the bucket. When we live under a bucket, which means, okay, we will be a Christian that don't share the gospel. We, as a Christian, won't help uh, or minister to people. But we are just being a silent Christian. You know, I believe that this generation be a, gen- a, a generation that will rise up with the solution to the loss. Okay, we would be a generation that will be proclaimers of the gospel. Can you imagine if all of us are burning with the gospel? All 300 of us, okay, right now in, in Zoom, there's 294. What if 294 of us are burning with the gospel? You know, I challenge you today, okay, don't live a life just following the flow of, of the world of just studying, getting good results, getting good work. All these are good, okay? But what are we really living for? Are we living for what is eternal? Are are we just living our life for God? You know, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel. I'm going to say this again. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel. Every single day, every single day before I leave my house, I'll say, Lord, help me not to be ashamed of the gospel, Lord. Help me not to be ashamed of the gospel. Do you know how I grow able to be uh, bold or whatever, okay, just to go up to people and just preach the gospel? Because God one day spoke to me, hey, Nick, you are able to prank people on the streets, public, whatsoever. Why can't you preach the gospel? I was like, wow, God, that's so true. You know, and we are dealing with eternal life, you know. Yeah, I just want to share with you a story, okay. Um, next slide. Okay, this guy named Paolo, okay. He's the guy that I reached out to at, at America, okay. Basically, he was asking money for his mom who has cancer, okay. And he was selling that, that flower, you can see, uh, one for like $5 or something. You know, every single day, people just drive past him, drive past him, drive past him. You know, are we going to stop for the one? Are we going to stop for that person that God loves? So one fine day, okay, when I was praying at home, God says, I want you to stop for him. I want you to give this certain amount of money to him. And I want you to tell him that I have not forsaken him. I have not left him. I'm always with him. The next day I went to find him. I, 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 I said, hey, this, my, okay, before I, honestly, okay, before I gave, before I went to him, right, I was at a bus stop. I was like, okay, God, you got to help me. You got to help me. I'm going to be so weird, but I'm just going to do it. And then I went ahead. I said, hey, this is for you. And, and this is from, from God. God spoke to me to give it to you. And, and, and God says to you specifically that he has never left you nor forsake you. And then he began to share. He said, like, you know, I have not been praying for so long. And last night I've been praying Say, God, help me. I really need help. And that was the exact time when God spoke to me. I want you to go and stop for him. And then at that point of time, he gave his life to God once again. He rededicated his life to God and then uh, got him a Bible and he began to walk with the Lord. And that's just one of the story. Okay, next slide. Okay, there are a few more stories. Okay, like I just want to roughly share that the red shirt guy is the guy that I met in the gym. You know, while I was just working out, you know, this is, uh, we have to share the gospel wherever we go, wherever we are. You know, even in the gym, you know, um, two of his, um, he, he and his friend gave his life to God after I said, hey, look, you know, we can work out so much. We can build our muscles whatsoever. At the end of the day, when we die, all these things is gone. I told them right in their face. I said, hey, look, when you die, what's more important is your spiritual life. And then I shared the gospel with them. The next Two girls, okay, you can see I was running at my, um, at my compound, okay, and then, and then uh, uh, my shoelace was untied. And then one of the girls like, hey, um, your shoelace is untied. I said, hey, do you know who is Jesus? <laughs> Just because my shoelace is untied, they gave their life to God, okay, that's amazing. And then the other one is um, at a supermarket where um, this guy who had back pain, and, and God spoke to me, hey, he has back, ca- back pain, go and speak to him. I said, hey, bro, do you have a back pain? how do you know, you know, and all. And then he was quite anti-Jesus and all. And then we began to pray for him and, 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 and he, he did felt better. And then he said, if God healed me, I would give my life to God. And um, yeah, then he left. Okay, next slide. I just want to share with you guys, okay, not just stories, but I want to share with you 
that there is power in the gospel. Okay, you can say, hey, Nick, you know, you know uh, how can I save the lost? How can I, how can I uh, uh, save my friend? Can I say to you, you can't save your friend. There's no way you can save your friend. It's only through God. When you preach the gospel, there will be power. There will be chains being broken. You know, when you preach the gospel, not just uh, uh, they, they're understanding, uh, uh, they will just understand the gospel. What actually happened is that their spirit man within them will begin to, to, to hear what, what God is telling him. So when you preach the gospel, there is power. Don't underestimate the power of God, the power of the gospel. Can I say, okay, um, Holy Spirit is the one that convicts their hearts of the sin, needing a savior. You know, we don't have, we don't have to, 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 to beg people to, to give their life to God. We don't have to tell people how, how lost they are. Honestly, okay, they know how lost they are. They know how broken they are. They know how much void they have in their heart, you know. And um, all we have to do is just step out in courage to love and share the gospel. Can, can I say this, okay? And in my, in my uh, I don't know how it goes, but when you pray for the sick, people get healed or don't get healed. Can I say that you don't just leave that, that as that? We have to preach the gospel. What if, okay, for example, someone gets healed and don't give their life to God? We are just putting a plaster on their wound and at the end of the day when they die, they go to hell just because they don't have Jesus in their life. So what I'm saying here is that in every single opportunity you have with people, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. This, just this morning, okay, I was buying a, a something from, from someone on Carousel, okay, this, this, this young guy. I said, hey, you know, thanks for, for coming all the way to, to, to sell me this and all. Um, do you know who is Jesus? And I began to share with him, you know, who Jesus is, you know, meaning of life. Look at what COVID-19 has done, blah, blah, blah. And we need Jesus. And just begin to share the gospel. We have to share the gospel. You know, all we have to do is just have that 60 seconds of instant courage to say, do you know who is Jesus? And then it will flow. You know, the Bible says that Holy Spirit will give you words at the very hour. You don't have to worry about words. Yes, we can practice on like, you know, steps on how we can preach the gospel. Like the tips, you know, the zone leaders have been sharing on social media, the tips on how to preach the gospel, the tips on testimony. Can I say to you, yes, you can learn all this, but when you actually preach the gospel, don't worry about the tips. Don't worry about that. Just share who God is to you, what God has done for you, and just see what God will do through you. Don't have to worry about the results. Just preach the gospel. We have the solution to the lost. We have to share the solution to the lost. And then they will be found. Okay? So I just want to encourage you guys. Okay? Let's all take this up. Let's not remain a silent Christian anymore. Can you imagine if all of us 300 plus of us would share the gospel by at the end of the week, 300 of, of the people in Singapore would hear the gospel and given a chance to receive Jesus in their life. Come on, generations. It's time to change the nation. It's time to shake this nation with the gospel. We are always sharing, you know, news about that, that uh, minister. We about share about that news, that bad news. And let's start to share the good news, man. Come on. We always share about, about juicy news, about the news, about this, that, that person. When are we going to share the good news? Come on, let the good news be burning in us, man. You know, let's all go for it. One last story before I end. Next slide. This friend named um, Eugene, he's my NS friend, okay? And I've been trying to reach him for, for uh, a year, okay? And uh, I've been trying to... Uh, 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 share with him the gospel and stuff like that. And one day, I, I, I said, hey, bro, let's meet at a cafe. And I met him at a cafe for two hours straight. I've been sharing with him the gospel. He has been sharing with me his opinion and stuff. But he didn't really give his life to God, okay? When I go to America, I receive a news from him saying, hey, Nick, I started to go to church and I received Jesus in my life. I want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Just because... I focused on one friend to preach the gospel to and been praying for him. And when I was in America, that's like, wow, uh, a wow news for me, you know. And you guys can do it as well. 
you don't have to be an evangelist to preach the gospel. Everyone is called to share the gospel. You know, you don't have to be an extrovert. All you need to do is to have a willing heart and say, God, use me. Amen. Hey, do you know who's Jesus? That's all it takes. I promise you, man, that's all it takes. And then let God do the work, all right? And I just want to end off here, okay? I want to pray for you guys, okay? At this moment, let the burden, you know, of the Lord just, just begin to rest upon our hearts for the loss. You know, right now, even wherever you are, okay, I want you guys um, to, to close your eyes. I want to pray for you guys. And after that, what we're going to do is we're going to ask God, God, who do you want me to reach this coming week on Monday onwards? Who do you want me to focus on? You know, and then we will want to pray for that one friend. Okay, let, let me just pray for you guys first. Okay, let's all close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your heart. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that you paid a huge price on the cross, God, for us. Lord, we thank you for eternal life. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus, you so love us. But I pray, let it not stop here, God. Lord, I pray that you, you call us to share, oh God, the good news. You call us to share the love. You call us to share, oh God, what's in your heart to the lost. Let us not be a Christian that is silent. Let us not, oh God, God, contain the gospel just within our life, God. But Lord, I pray that you burn in us. Oh God, you burn in us. You burn in us to share the gospel to the people around us. Not because it's a Christian duty to do it, God. Lord, not because it's a religious duty that, that we have to do. Lord, I pray, oh God, we won't reach out to the lost just because of height, not because of right, what we, we, we have heard today, Lord, but I pray in Jesus' name that you grip our hearts with your heart, Lord. I pray that, that even when we go to school, when we go to work, when we are in the streets, oh God, when, when we're buying our stuff, Lord, I pray that you grip our hearts, I ask in Jesus' name, oh God, to love on the people, to share with them the solution that they have been always looking for. Lord, I thank you that you burn in us right now in Jesus' name. And even right now, Lord, I pray that you speak to us. Lord, that one friend that you want us to focus on right now, Lord, would you speak to us? Show us a vision of our friend. Speak to us, God, clearly on what you want to speak to uh, the friend of ours that you want us to reach, God, right now. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're working in us. I pray that, Holy Spirit, you have, you have um, a full reign. You have full authority to use us, God. I pray that this generation, that we as generations, God, Lord, would, would stand up, be a proclaimer of the gospel, Lord. I thank you. I praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, and I, I, I know that God is speaking to many of you guys right now. I know it in my heart because it has always been in God's heart for the lost. Okay. And I know that God, you know, is putting that one friend, you know, or maybe two or three, okay, even in, in, your, in, in your mind right now. Okay. I, I want you to write it down. I want you to take this seriously. Let's all go for this. Okay. What if? What if, okay, we take this lightly and that one friend after this week, something happened, a car crash or something, okay? I pray that it won't, but something happened. I pray that we will not go there, man. I pray that we won't have a sense of regret not preaching the gospel. You know, uh, many of you know my, uh, my, my story. I have a friend that committed suicide and he always said, maybe next time. Maybe next time I'll receive Jesus in my life. And I want you guys to take the gospel seriously and, and let's preach the gospel, all right? 